We're just going to go ahead and, and kick this thing off. Yeah. One-on-one -on -one is good. Charmaine told me I had a good scintillating 30 minutes to run something. So I'm just going to go ahead and have this conversation. And I think I had someone just check me out at the door back there. That's always how it goes, right, when you're working from home. So my presentation really is, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and lay it out there. It's perhaps the most important one. So if you've decided to take the time to come in here and listen to me, then you're going to be in for a treat. And I hazard a guess that it might be, again, the most important topic that you hear about at the Angels Business Summit 2021. So for those that aren't here to listen, I would please highly encourage you to internalize the information that I provide. Take it back out there to those folks that missed it and tell them to reach out to me to get engaged. Because the gem that I'm going to give you, the gift that I'm going to give you, is often leveraged, especially from those of us that have a, a deep investment in faith. And through faith, I, will, I, I like to say the correct application of religion, even if we are not religious. The point is we often call it discernment, all right? The ability to see a thing and understand a thing and choose. So what in particular is my gift? My gift is critical thinking. It's critical thinking. Now, often enough, you have people who say that they apply critical thinking, that they use it effectively. It comes into play in politics, comes into play in, into play in our performance. It comes into play in how we do our everyday, our job. And for this particular summit, it's especially applicable because out of all the seminars and all the sessions you may be attending, discernment is going to be key. All of them have value. All of them bring something to the table. But how you use the information that is provided is perhaps the most important thing that you can consider, internalize, and act upon. Critical thinking. That's it, people. So what I've done, what I've created, is a process whereby every person can apply critical thinking appropriately. It's called the FCT method or the 3FE method. The 3FE method will flow through the rest of this presentation to what we call it from 3FE to FCT. And what is from 3FE to FCT? We've got a book that supports it. You're hopefully, well, you'll be seeing this image inverted as the reflection is coming back to me. But the book from 3FE to FCT is Everyday Critical Thinking to attain familiarity, comfort, and trust. And I have another book that accompanies that, accompanies that one. It's just called 3FE, but breaking it down, right? What is 3FE? It's find, focus, establish the fundamentals, execute. That's 3FE. That's what it's all about. That's what we have to leverage in order to do our jobs. It's actually what we have to leverage most emphatically if we're going to take the time to start our own business, to build our own enterprise, to create something that will not only generate wealth for us, but for our posterity. That's point and purpose, right? So it's fine, focus, establish the fundamentals and, and, and then execute. Three FE, tool for motivational empowerment. And, and like I said, folks, I, I don't stand on air. As you can see, I didn't get dressed up for this because I'm an everyday kind of guy. <laughs> I want to lean in. Like I said, I'm going to drop these gems on you and tell you what's really important. What things you're going to need in order to, again, apply that discernment to do what is actually necessary in order to take advantage of all of these angels that your remains brought to the table and apply the gifts that they provided and use them effectively. 3FE will help you do that. So let's just kind of briefly break down 3FE, right? The first phase is find. So what do you got to do when you want to attack a problem? You want to deconstruct it. Break it down. In the find phase, you identify the issue. You find out what it is. You open your eyes. You ready your mind. You set your attitude to full-on positive, and you engage in true critical thinking. You question everything, and then you write down the details. And I emphasize write it down because more often than not, we tend to type. As a matter of fact, for many of us, writing is a lost art. I pity the fool. Because you need to be able to write. You know, typing is fine. I type a lot. It's easier. But writing is better because not only does it exercise the hand and it gets the neurons flowing, as you form letters, more neurons are popping. It's absolutely necessary. 
You're exercising that mind. If you want to put that critical thinking thing to work in the fine phase, you can do that and you must write it down. And how do we execute this phase, right? I take people back. You learn critical thinking, a lot of you, most of us, first, second, and third grade. You started to apply discernment and then your teacher said, well, I want you to write a book report. I'm gonna write a book report, I'm gonna write a book report. We're gonna get pencil and paper. You know, remember those big old fat husky pencils? We were young, small hands. Grip it tight, form a letter. Teacher will tell you to do a particular thing around how you exercise that, that, that work. You do that job, you, you write that report. In the fine phase, you do the same thing. And again, I say this is critical thinking at its most simplistic. You answer a few fundamental questions. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. You remember that? Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Those five questions not only applied effectively when you were in the third grade, but I tell you now at a Fortune 5 company, in a high value meeting worth hundreds of millions of dollars, when you get folks together and they're aggregating thoughts and they're saying, we're gonna work on the problem. Take that problem, pull it out, dump it on the table and say, it's the same kind of problem you wanna build a business around. You have the big minds at the table. You have the folks who lean in and hold sway and can be quite political and highly influential. And they start working on the thing and it's hour one and it's hour two. And you're sitting there and it's going into the first half of the third hour and you're looking at each other. And many of you are going, you're going, you're saying, you're thinking, you say, I say, I say, I say again. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I think we understand why. You know, it's a nine figure impact with a whole bunch of high powered individuals. And if someone would take the moment to be a bit more vocal about it and stand up and say, wait a minute, is this really what we wanna do? Because you know when that happens, many of you have been in that kind of meeting, now all of a sudden someone else chimes in and goes, you know what, that's a good question. I'm not sure of what we're doing. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're down the path of solving. We've got like pages here of things that we're gonna take action on. Yeah, but, 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 but can we go back to the original problem? What, 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 what are we doing? That's real discernment, people. That's critical thinking in action. And what I want to give you in that gift is empower you to take the time to say, what are we doing? No matter what meeting you're in, no matter who's in the room with you, whether it be CEO, president, anybody else, we all do the same things. We put on pants the same way. You can lean in. You can ask those critical questions. And that's what you have to do in the fine phase for 3FE. So what do you do next? You focus. Look closely at what you found in the fine phase. Focus on it. These pieces of information aren't truly information yet. It's just data. It's all data. So I'm going to need you in the focus phase to dig into the details and clarify the bits and pieces of the data. Take note of the relationships between the bits of data. What additional details are there to consider? This is an analysis phase, right? You've put together a lot of disparate things. You've written them down. What is it? Why are you doing it? Who's it affecting? Where does it take place? When do we need to execute? How might we go about doing this? Focus on those pieces. Get those disparate bits of data together. Right? Look at them. Look at them hard. Take more notes. Don't get caught up in analysis paralysis, but do what you need to do as you cycle through the data. As relationships between the data points become clear, a path arises from that data and then things begin to make sense. Now you see when data has meaning, that's when it becomes information. Information has value and it inherently lends itself to a solution. In 3FE we call that the fundamentals. You put together the essential tasks that bind the data together into valuable information upon which you can take action, but do steps that will resolve your issue. You, you're, you're three FE in this thing. And I can tell you right now, when you go through this exercise, it's highly motivating. You find yourself invested with emotion. You see that something is taking place that will allow you to resolve and you're ready to execute.
And that's simply the final phase of 3FE because, you know, sometimes you need an execution plan. You write down the steps of how you're going to execute in phases. Maybe you'll execute in one fell swoop all at once, or maybe you have about five or ten preparatory steps that you need to take. But whenever you're ready, you go with emphasis. You execute, you execute, you execute. That's 3FE in action. That's the tool for motivational empowerment. That's my gift to you. That's what I want you to be able to to harness, put in your tool belt and launch out. So you can take 3FE and and, and I don't care how complex the problem may be. 3FE allows you to decompose a given complex issue into its disparate components. And you can attack those disparate components with the same 3FE exercise. You exercise those neurons. You're writing down the details. You're determining from the data that's provided what information is valuable and how you can construct that into a fundamental plan for execution. I promise you, you can use this tool in any given environment, apply it to any given problem. And it's not a mutually exclusive thing. I want to emphasize that as well. 3FE allows you to open the doorway to other multiple solutions. Are you a Six Sigma green belt, a Six Sigma black belt? Right? Are you a CMMI expert? Are you a systems development life cycle expert? Do you look at different lean methods in order to execute your projects? It's fine. There's no exclusivity here. 3FE allows you to open the doorway to finding out which other methodology you might want to take in prosecuting the solving of a given problem. You may be a safe expert. I'm one of those safe certified guys. But, you know, the, we use SAFE, but I can still take 3 FE within SAFE and apply my critical thinking mind and get motivated about how I do those disparate parts, how I manage a program increment, how I look at my DevSecOps when I'm doing that IT work and I pull the team together and we say, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to solve. However, the fundamental point that we have to clarify and we emphasize again and again is we're going to make sure we understand what it is we're doing before we do it. Again, it, it, it's point and purpose and you do it with passion. You lean deep into discomfort and say, I want to make sure I'm clear on what this thing is. And then you start to tie together those data points, spare pieces of data that you're pulling as you're looking at the things around the issue, deep in the issue. You put it in the crucible. You heat it up. It comes information. It has value. It ties together. You discern what that fundamental plan is going to be in terms of how you're going to execute bit by bit to resolve the problem. You need to talk to this person, have a team about around that concept, purchase this new tool, configure that tool, apply it to the problem in a proof of concept environment, focus through that, iterations, make sure we do this function, that function, A, B, C, N, D. We tie them all together. We run it again in that proof of concept space, and then we move the solution to another environment. We've got details around that, and we execute on that. Focus, focus, focus. Make sure that our customer is paying attention to it. We get feedback. We go over the feedback. We iterate again. We look at the details. Make sure they check out. We iterate again. We look at the details. We check them out. We demo, demo, demo. And then a couple of weeks down the line, because we were real clear on the what, right? We were real clear on the what. We did the necessary focus. We established our fundamental plan. And then we launch that and we execute. We know we're ready. Final demo. We're using a safe approach. We, we've got scrum teams and in, in the IT world, we understand that those scrum teams are groups of people that are adhering together to solve a particular problem and develop functionality and software. We've got the thing together and we launch it out. You put it out there in production, problem solved. That's 3FE, folks. Now, that's in the corporate environment. But again, the same thing applies if you're going to start an enterprise. I need you to use pen and paper. Again, write it down. Critical thinking, write it down. What is it you're trying to provide? What service or product are you going to provide to the world out there? You're a brand new entrepreneur. Write down your idea. Look at the disparate pieces. There are problems that have to be solved if you're going to start this enterprise. You know, are you incorporated? Do you have your legal issues satisfied? Do you have your account issues satisfied? Your accounting, your fundamentals. Do you have your pro formas laid out? Have you done a business plan? Do you think a business plan is not necessary in order for you to just get started? If it's not a business plan, can it be skinny down? At least so you understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're going to make money doing it. You got to ask yourself all the questions again. We start in third grade. Who, what, when, where, how, and why? 
critical thinking. It applies to this entrepreneurial effort too. And because you're a human being engaged in doing this activity of starting this business, you got to make sure there's a social component that is clear too. Where are you doing business? Who are you doing business with? And how will you prop up? How will you prosecute doing business with that group of people? Because more often than not, especially if you're living here in Gwinnett County, where I live, or just state of Georgia in general, the southeastern portion of this great nation we call the United States of America, it is incredibly diverse. And that is an ultimate segue into this, the book. From 3FE to FCT, again, it's powerfully motivating, leveraging this critical thinking tool, but it's even more motivating when you realize you can apply the same mode of thinking to social problems and shift the paradigm. You can shift the paradigm in terms of how you engage. And that's critically important, right? You're going to launch your business. You're not just going to be selling the white folks, the black folks. I like to call myself an American African. Maybe I can talk to Charmaine and I can do a seminar on that another time. Reason why I want to say American African as opposed to African American. But again, I'm not silly or pained about it. You can call me black. Even though this is black, I'm kind of brown. Either way, same thing applies. I'm going to sell something to you. You're going to sell something to me. We want to build these enterprises. You have to figure out how to meet me where I am. You have to be able to cross the divide, especially when our cultures clash, our politics clash, our reasons for being somehow may be ideologically, ideologically opposed, right? So how do you get past that? Well, that's what 3FE is designed to do in conjunction with FCT. And what is FCT? FCT, again, is familiarity, comfort, and trust. So for the, these last 10 minutes, why don't we just kind of just jump into it a little bit, right? Performance, improving at work, improving at home, improving in the community, just improving. But what do I mean when I'm talking about that? See, this FC thing, to, this FCT thing, it's all about diversity and inclusion, right? You know, and when I talk about this, I know I've encountered it more often than not, unfortunately, but it still applies. Folks are getting tired of talking diversity. You know, we're, we're shifting now. We're moving from the critical thinking exercise in terms of how you apply it and be motivated about it. Now we're going to talk about the social component, and it is absolutely imperative that you internalize this as well, because no matter how you're trying to engage as an angel, and build up your enterprise and apply your network, diversity and inclusion are critically important for you to consider. And folks are tired of diversity, that's fine. What I'm providing as an addendum to this gift is a simplistic approach. You hear D, E, and I, and you, many of you feel like, oh, I just can't take it anymore. I, I, I don't wanna do this, right? It's this thing about diversity again. Well, you know, it, it's, what I'm providing, it, it still is. But again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a switch, it's a tack. We've turned. It isn't as well. It's a simplistic, holistic approach to the ENI, using language that everyday people can understand. I'm not going to get highfalutin with you, really. I said, I'm talking to you guys from my home office, and it's a wonderful Saturday afternoon, and I'm sitting here in a t-shirt talking to you about some of the most important things that you'll ever have to consider, especially if you're going to start a business. This book will help you do what you should do, what you should feel, especially if you know you're 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 going to engage in here again out with these, with with different people, different cultures. I've been doing this kind of work for years, to be quite honest, and I promise you, you know the angst and pain that you feel when you when you engage in this topic, you know, and you you take these other courses and you get go out there and you get educated and they throw a lot of terminology at you and what and whatnot. All of it, to be quite honest. Is, is, is necessary, but you know what I want to provide is a bridge because it's all about perspective. This work is needed and perspective is a must. Your ability to see this work as something transformative is going to elevate you beyond where I can even, in, even stay. It's a good thing. It's important. And when you realize it, I promise you, you're going to be all the better for it. So sliding back a little bit, I, I, I missed providing something for you guys when I was talking about 3FE um, and this push for critical thinking. I didn't share my hallmark with you. I've been saying this for years, and, and those that know me will recognize it, but I share it here for you now 
And I know um, Charmaine is recording the session, so maybe she'll pull it out and share it with uh, the rest of you uh, at a later date. But the hallmark of the critical thinker is the sincere ability to internalize and seek to understand the perspective of others, most especially when that perspective is diametrically or even violently opposed to your own. So again, at the beginning, I was talking about how everyone always says they're ready to embrace critical thinking and they know what it is and they apply it. I broke it down for you by taking you back to third grade and that's most important because we wanna deconstruct before we reconstruct. But again, also, as you reconstruct, you can't lose, fact, lose, lose sight of the fact that essential to that foundation, to your ability to, to execute on critical thinking is the necessary component internalized within it, that you take the time to step out of your shoes and turn your head and see things around the corner, left and or right. That you consider perspective, most importantly. Aspiring critical thinking is an absolute must for this entrepreneurial journey that you set before yourself, but you have to be able to apply perspective. You got to. So the hallmark is incredibly important, without question, right? So please take that with you. We apply that and then we move on again into FCT, familiarity, comfort, and trust. It's an absolute must. So we start with the familiarity piece, right? Just for a moment. Familiarity as definition is we become familiar with someone, we get comfortable, you know, what's comfort? Comfort is when you're comfortable with someone. You can sit down with them, have a drink or something. From comfort, we learn to lean into trust. When we're familiar, when we're comfortable, we can attain trust. See, it's just that simple. That's the heart of FCT, familiarity, comfort, and trust. Again, considering it critically, logically, if we learn to become familiar with someone, we can get comfortable with that someone. If we are comfortable, we learn to trust. Now, how powerful is that? From the perspective of you people who want to build businesses, it enhances your performance. It allows you to engage with others. It provides you with a tool set to improve your ability to operate within the team that you create because you're pulling people from different cultures, different backgrounds, and you want that because it provides you with diversity of thought, diversity of engaging, diversity of solving. You see what I mean? Leveraging the tool in order to get past your apprehensions and work more closely with people that are different with you, you can't put a price on that. Even applying it at home, right? It allows you to make true and honest attempts at finding common ground and hearing each other. So again, I'm giving you a, a tool set that allows you to sit down with your significant other and perhaps see the space between you. You already got familiarity, you got comfort, but often enough you have trust issues. So it takes a conversation where you lean into discomfort, use your feet to discern and, and put the pieces on the table. We're talking about taking negative conflict and turning it positive. It's far, far better to find common ground rather than ignoring it and fighting over that common ground. I think you would all agree with that. Enemy sure, critical thinking, true critical thinking, is what we need in our politics, right? And, and, and politics applies to you folks that are starting businesses that are getting ready to try to launch out there. You need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be aware of your, your environments and, and what, and what you know, political issues you may encounter, you know, zoning, things of that nature, what you can and can't do in a given district. You know, we need that in our politics and the people that manage our politics, not biased anecdotes that people use to fight against each other. You always got to remember the hallmark of the critical thinker. Perspective matters. Because we want to live in an environment where we can all thrive, right? With three or three to FCT, we can stop the game of thrones and truly work together through the challenges that separate us and find ourselves more effectively standing on common ground. That's the deal, people. That's what we know we need to get to. Now, I'm going to share something else with you. Um, uh, there's another internal tool within FCT. 
and I'm gonna need you to buy the book if you if you if you want if you want to get it. So understand that inside familiarity, confidence, trust, there's another tool that that I provide, and it's called a diversity wheel. How simplistic is that? It's a wheel. But I'm going to describe it to you because, again, when you lean into discomfort and have a real strong critical thinking conversation, that will becomes this this powerful amended tool that you can leverage and, and, and see where, you know what? We're not so far apart. The diversity wheel, as described, gives you dimensions like what are my dimensions? What are my dimensions? I mean, we all know I'm black. You can see that. Right. American African. American African. But um. Just to break it down, because I, I wrote this and I got to memorize it when I do these uh, follow on seminars. But my dimensions that I like to speak to, right, are education. You know, do we have common ground around education? Political belief. You know, you know, you, they say don't bring politics to your job. Don't integrate politics into your business. But as I just said, that's going to happen whether you like it or not. Finding common ground and understanding is critical. And this is the tool to help you do it. Family, organizational role, language and communication skills, religion, hot topic, your appearance. And then we've got other areas like age, gender, identity and expression, national origin, sexual orientation. Now, I I just named a couple of dimensions. And again, this is all about becoming familiar, getting comfortable and establishing trust. What you got to understand about those dimensions, right? Is that if you're going to have a conversation around those core topics, we know they can be heated, but you assume positive intent, you lean into discomfort, you engage in positive conflict always, always, and you look and say, these are the things that are endemic to me as a person in these dimensions. I'm a black heterosexual male. I'm, um, I I am a man of faith. But uh, I find grace in all other religions as well, because I'm also a student of multiple words. When I was a child, one weekend, I'd go to a Catholic church because I was uh, baptized and confirmed in the Roman Catholic Church uh, of the faith. But the other weekend, I'd go to Noonan, Georgia, where I would sit for three or four hours at a money earning Mount Vernon Baptist Church where the very, very much Reverend Venerable Coleman would speak over the crowd in stentorian tones. And I forgot to mention the place didn't have an air conditioner. It'd be quite hot. And uh, he would talk about fire and brimstone and the power of Christ. And if you fell asleep, you know, I'm a kid, every woman in there with their wonderful hat was empowered to knock you upside the head. I got hit more than once. They would even hit adults, right? Because you're supposed to pay attention to the word. So that is one of my most formidable dimensions. But I say all that to say that from a dimensional perspective, this tool is impeccable and you can lean into a conversation. You see how I injected a little bit of humor in there. This is what the conversations look like when you apply critical thinking. You assume positive intent and you don't come at people with rancor. And this is real, especially in business, especially in business. You folks are going to want to know how to talk to your customers, your, your clients, your partners, your vendors. And they may be very different, very diverse. Come with an inclusive approach. Have conversations where you can lean in and talk about those dimensions. And you offer them up as part of the deal, so to speak, the engaging deal. And that's what it is. I'm at 1.30. Charmaine, I'm surprised you hadn't come on and told me to to stop. But, uh, hey, Victor, thank you for that. You guys know when I'm in my cycle, I didn't post the book out there. But this is it. From 3FE to FCT, familiarity, comfort, and and trust. So, um, yes, that was pretty fast. Lots of detail. A lot packed into 30 uh, minutes. I hope they were white hot and they sizzle inside. And I'm DS Brown. Please reach out to me. Connect with me. And like I said at the beginning, for those that did miss this, I, and, I, and I'm, I say, I say again, that perhaps this is the most important session in this entire thing. Because even though you're learning a great deal about businesses and you're becoming angels and you're, you're thriving and, and rising entrepreneurs without critical thinking, the ability to discern and a little bit of familiarity, comfort and trust, 
Meaning if you will, you will, you will, you will grow and, 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 and persevere through that. You will fight your way through those challenges to your eventual success, but it'll be all the harder. And unfortunately for some of you, you'll fail. And hopefully you will learn the rule of failure. I talk about that in the book too. But you can avoid the rule of failure to a very large degree. And I know because I have failed, which is why I've, I've distilled this information and put it in the book. But um, if you internalize that and understand that and come at it with this approach, then the job of becoming a rising angel and, 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 and you know, prosecuting your project, getting your business off the ground, having a million customers, all of that becomes a lot easier. And it will definitely lead to your eventual success. I think this uh, whole business summit has been outstanding. Charmaine, thank you for inviting me. Like I said, I know it's recording. You're going to have to edit out the front part because I was looking at this way and that. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so very much. I'm going to stop talking now.